Hello and welcome to Stephanie B. Creativity. And today we're going to make this adorable owl tea cozy. I'm so excited. It is super easy, very beginner friendly. This can be a first ever project that you ever do on your circular knitting machine. You can do this with a knitting loom. You can do this with hand needles, whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. It's worked as a tube. The ends are sealed up. Then it's folded in half and stitched here at the bottom and then at the top to leave the holes for your handle and your spout. Isn't he cute? I found these cute buttons in my button jar. So I bought just a couple bulk packs of buttons at the craft store, your hobby craft stores. I looked specifically for at least one bag of wooden buttons. And then I found a bag of natural colors, uh, plastic buttons. This is a pairing of big wood buttons with these really pretty plastic uh, green buttons. This is a standard size teapot, kind of your, your standard brown Betty style. And the tea cozy just pops over so easy. And if you have it full of tea, you just need to be slow and steady putting it back on. There you go. So here we go. We're going to make this. Are you excited? <laughs> Let's get started. I'm going to use some waste yarn to cast on about four rows. And I am just doing a front back cast on all the way around. go and now we're gonna run around I haven't reset my timer yet or my timer I keep calling it a timer I have not reset my counter I do not use the counter that's actually on the machine it does work still on mine but I really like the digital counter I had a community member ask do all of the centro counters stop working and eventually, yeah, I think they do. Now that's, that's as far as I can go right here. So I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to put a single strip of color, a contrasting color, different than the yarn you're using for your main project and different from your original cast on waste yarn. So now those are all dropped in there. I am actually going to cut these off shorter. And here we go. We are using the Red Heart Super Saver Stripe. And this is in the Latte Stripe color. And I'm hoping that this works because I've been having some issues today with a lot of drop stitches but I think that it was the skein of yarn I was using. So I'm hopeful that this skein of yarn is going to run just fine. Now I'm going to do 90 rows. Just keep an eye. And if you have tuck stitches, take care of them right away. When you see it. This is looking hopeful. I'm pulling out a, the yarn from the skein right now because the skein is brand new. And so there's not a lot of room in that skein for the yarn to kind of twirl around on the inside and pull out easily. But so far, so good. I think, I think we're going to be just fine on this. I'm going to go ahead and zip ahead to the finished tube and I'll show you how I take it off.
fresh from the machine. So it needs to be stretched. And then what, what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the bottom, find where that, where the sides are. So we're going to get this lined up on its side now. Isn't this pretty? I love this color. I don't really like the yarn, but I love the color. And I haven't found another yarn that has this colorway. So it was a little bit of a chore getting through this. I was picking up drop stitches and I was uh, taking care of tuck sti tucked stitches, but I think I got them all. So it looks really nice. It's very pretty. This is going to be the top of his head. So instead of the light on top, he's going to have dark on top and light on the bottom. I'm going to slip stitch these together really quick. And I'm just going to use the yarn that's already on here. So I'm looking for my beginning and ending stitches. Future Stephanie here. I had to quickly just run out a tube so that I could show you how I do the finishing off of the ends. What I'm doing is, you see how there's these really nice stitches that you see of the color between the waist yarn? That's what you want to see. So you're going to be going for these loops here between the waist yarn except for this very last one, which is going to be above. So I am going to go ahead and put my needle into the last full loop before the end. And I'm going to come over to the first loop here and just slip stitch. And that's all I'm doing. I'm doing a slip stitch. So I'm just slip stitching this across. See, picking up that that stitch there that's between my waist yarn bumps and pull it through. Oh, there we go. So you just go back and forth and you're just slip stitching back and forth. The, st the stitches will pull and they'll get small sometimes so just be slow and careful you know that you have 48 stitches or 48 46 stitches so you should have 24 and 24 or 23 and 23 on each side and I'm just going to go back and forth and pick up those stitches I'm going to do it on both ends and I'll meet you back here now it's time to pull off the waist yarn. This side is going to be super quick. You're going to go find the ends of your single, single strand right here. Go to the other side and find one of the loops. And what you're going to do is pick up that loop and you're just going to pull it out like that and then like magic that just pulls right away and now we've got this lovely sealed closed end it makes it double thick and nice for keeping your tea nice and cozy in a cozy and now the other end here because we didn't put the little zipper strip on it we just have to pull the, pull the waist yarn off. This is actually very satisfying to do. And one of the reasons why I didn't pop, 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 didn't do that off camera. I wanted to do that with you guys. <laughs> I went and did about an inch up on one, one side here and about half an inch on the other side because the handle usually comes down farther than the spout and I'm going to stitch up an inch which is about five stitches then I'm going to skip 
uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 stitches, which is about 3 inches. And then I will tie back in and I will mattress stitch up the rest of the way. On the other side, I'm going to come up about 3 stitches, skip 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, about four inches. Go back in and then stitch the rest of the way up. Attach these sides together with a, um, with a little clip so that you can make sure that your V's are going the same direction. Make sure it's nice and flat. Go to the other side. And you see how these V's are not going the same direction? You need to make sure to have them lined up. If you don't line them up, your mattress stitch won't look invisible. So there, this is marked three stitches up. This is marked about five stitches up. Go to the other, to the next one. Now watch, look at this. It's trying to flip over. You don't want it to flip over. You want to make sure that you're still going in the same direction with your V's. And now just go back and forth. Don't pull it down tight yet. Wait till you, because you're only doing five stitches. Wait till you're all the way up to the end of your, your area. Well, maybe I'm doing six, five or six. Yeah. And that. And now we're going to go and go and look at that. You have a beautiful mattress stitch closure right there. Now I'm going to go around those stitches, come to the inside, and I'm just going to kind of weave my, my yarn in and didn't want to have the uh, little eyes looking at you, you could do that. So if you're going, if you're planning on making it reversible, make sure that your stitches when you weave them in are really tidy and try to make them as invisible as you can. And look at that. We've got a lovely joined seam right there. And this one, I'm going to go up 15 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Make sure that your stitches are still going the same direction. I'm just going to show you stitching up this one side. I'll stitch up the other side and show you the finished product. Right now you can see this yarn because it is such a different color. It won't matter. You will not see this on the outside when we're done with this stitching. Just make sure that you stay in the same column on both sides and that your V's are pointing the same direction. And then look at that beautiful seam. 
one of the columns. For about five or six stitches. And then go the other direction in that column on the other side and just twirl it going up those stitches. And that really is locked in enough. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, I'll meet you back here when I have the other side all stitched up. It's being stitched exactly the same way. Then we'll put our buttons on and he'll be all done. All right, let's test it out. Let's see if it fits. Pretty much it could fit either direction. The handle fits over that. Oh, <laughs> Look at that! Isn't that cute? Now, by putting it on here, we can figure out where we want to put the eyes. So I'm saying probably here. And let's see how many stitches over from the edge is that? One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's like there and there. That looks pretty good. And then his beak is actually going to be right up here between. <laughs> Embroider those sew them on, do whatever you want to do. I'm going to put buttons on and I'll come back and show you what it looks like at the end. All right, so we, we have finished this really cute little teapot cover. If you want to do this, go for it. Experience making something that is so adorably cute, you can hardly stand it. I love this little guy. I think that there's going to be more owls, but I can also see if you tuck in the top up here, you can start making it into another shape. Look at that. You can tuck those little ears in. You can make this top into a little head, put little floppy ears on it. You could have a bunny or a dog. If you keep it like this, you could adjust the ears, adjust your buttons, and make it into a cat by attaching a little tail coming off the back that gets sewn around the bottom. Have fun and explore the possibilities. Ideas are unlimited. You can take this wherever your creativity will lead you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to click that like button and leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you're going to make something like this, what would you do? Are you going to make it an owl? Are you going to make a dog or a cat or a dragon? What are you going to do? And I want to see you back here again really soon. This is Stephanie B from Stephanie B Creativity and go out do something creative, take care of yourself, and be kind to others. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.